Hello friends, it's Jayma Malmi. Welcome to another scrapbook video. Today I'm creating a two-page layout with these four photos. I'll talk about those in a minute, but look at this new paper collection that I'm using from Close to My Heart. This is called Dream Maker, and when I first saw it, oh my gosh, I was so giddy. These colors are just right up my alley, and then that gold foiling, oh my goodness, I absolutely love it. So I'll give you a look at that. I wanted to show you these pictures, because normally I print on demand. I you know, go through my phone and I print the photos that I want to scrapbook at that time, and then I can choose the size to print them and all that. But when I used to go to more uh, crops and retreats, I would print a whole bunch of photos at once, bring them with me, and then I never made it through hardly a fraction of them. So I found these in all of those photos I'd printed and wow, they are absolutely perfect. This is my daughter when she was a baby. She is now nine and a half, so definitely need to scrapbook these. And this is the perfect collection for that. I actually am going to be scrap lifting myself sort of because there are tons of papers in here that I love and want to use. And I did this one a few years ago and I, wanted to use a lot of the patterns in this collection too so I cut them into skinny strips and so I had the idea to do that again since all of my photos are vertical you know portrait orientation I thought it would lend itself well to this and doing all of those little strips in the background so I created this little sketch to help me out this little perfect I'm gonna uh, use this simply perfect title I believe have some embellishment clusters and journaling and so that is the plan but let me give you just a really quick look at this collection because I did do a YouTube short and an Instagram reel showing these papers but I just have to show you really quick because how amazing like this looks like it's glowing it's not it's just like the colors that they used but wow I absolutely love it okay so there's uh, one front and back pattern here is another one. Love all of the little speckles over here and that wash. And then we've got these patterns. Really fun like watercolor mixed media look without having to do mixed media. So this one I love that it's different colors on each side. So whichever side works best for your photos. And then we've got these large polka dots and small polka dots. This kind of reminds me of the stencil that's in the pack that I'll show you in a moment. But we also have cardstock. So this is the cardstock. It's got this fun marbly look, and then the back is just solid. Now you might be thinking, I don't recognize this color, and I didn't either. So I was looking at the colors in the kit, and I saw rosy, which is not a current color. So this is either special just for um, the collection or it's a hint at what might be coming. So in the cardstock, we've got rosy, ballerina, periwinkle, lagoon, glacier, and Sundance. And then I alluded to a stencil. So let me show that to you. It is a 12 by 12 stencil. And by the way, you can get all of these things separately or as a discounted bundle. So, and the bundle is really actually reasonably priced. So I'm going to be cutting these into four six by six stencils to be able to use them really easily. I love this um, leaf stencil. I just think that that is so fun. I'm excited to try that out. And then we have a stamp set. This is a double stamp set. So here's the other side. I actually was toying with using this as my title. Um, and then you've got all these options to use with it. I was gonna say, love you always. But I think I'm gonna save the stamp um, titles for once I run out of like the stickers and the other embellishment titles because I will always have the stamp set and then here's that other side we've got some flowers and I think I'm going to cut these out to use as embellishments and then I absolutely love all of these little um, background elements here the little splatters this is really fun too so lots of fun usable um, elements on this stamp set and then we've got a die cut pack too out of the black chipboard so it's probably hard to see it says lovely day so we've got a title option some leaves and tabs and a rose and some arrows and asterisks dragonflies circle hearts more leaves so lots of fun shapes there so I'm probably gonna bring in some other products as well but just wanted to start out with this and I'll show those as we go but let's go ahead and dive in I'm gonna pull in two Versa mats. 
and I'm gonna work on some white daisy paper. So let me get these all straightened up. And I wanna have the white daisy background because I'll have all of those colorful strips and the stenciling will also show up well on the white daisy. So I typically do start with a white daisy base. I can always change my mind if I want to. And then for my photos, I wanna have these two stretching photos together because obviously they're both stretching. And then these ones here. Um, this one actually, I'm, I wanna cover up this little tag and I'm gonna have an embellishment cluster up in this corner. So I might actually switch these and then do that. This one has black in the photo, this one has some dark, so I'll just kinda alternate that. Keep in mind that I'll have an embellishment cluster down here. We've got room for that. I don't want to cover up her little arm, so my sketch showed I'd have another little embellishment cluster here. I might move that up here and have that kind of tucked behind the corners. So I just kind of keep all that in mind as I'm laying out my photos. And then I'm going to have a photo mat behind these. So let's go ahead and choose the photos that are going to be behind the, or the paper that's gonna be behind the photos. Now, I definitely want this one, but if I have the strips cut like this, we'll have the whole rainbow, but we're only gonna see what's poking out here or down here. And I kinda want it to have a cohesive look, so I think what I'm gonna do is turn it, and I'll cut my strips so that they're all the same color. And I'll probably have this rosy color and the flamingo, and then maybe even cut a strip of the glacier so that we'll have three of this pattern. Now you could, since a lot of this is gonna be hidden, you could just cut the top and bottom of your strips to save paper. I'm not gonna deal with that. I am gonna have so many strips going across that I don't, and I always move things around, right? Like I'm always shifting things around. I don't wanna to have to move the top and the bottom and make sure that I'm keeping them even. Now, if you knew exactly what papers were gonna go where and you don't mind fussing with it, then by all means, go ahead and save your paper. But just for this purpose, I am not gonna worry about it. It's not that big a deal for me. Now, this one is so, so pretty. I definitely wanna cut a few strips of this and I like that that is a more solid background. So I'm kind of keeping in mind too, like this has a lot of white in the background, this does not. Now this one, same thing, if I'm gonna cut them in strips like this, you're gonna have a lot hiding, but this would have the rosy and the blues sticking out the top and bottom, which would work with my photos. I'm trying to stay away from the purples because there's no purple in my photos. So I might use this or I might use it, um, save it for another project because I'm thinking it might also look cool to cut these in strips and have those behind my photos. I might actually save that for another project. Um, this is the back of that and this would look really pretty with this as well. I might cut a couple of strips of that. The solid yellow will always be good. I don't want to use this because I don't want to introduce purple. Um, this splattery look would be good, so that could go kind of maybe in between these because that's more of a white background. Now this, we have the same issue with cutting it like this or do I want to cut it like this? That might be kind of fun to have that as well. So I'll keep that out just in case. Now this one, I think I want to save these for something else and keep them as whole sheets because they are just gorgeous background papers on their own. Um, I think I'll set those aside. Now this one would be really cool. Again, it has a little more white in the background. So I might kind of put that between two colors and I'll have more than one of these because this is my favorite. I'll have more of these. So I might not even use all of these. This one, I don't want the purple, so I'll bring that away. And this one has purple too, which I don't really want. So I might cut it strategically so that the purple is hiding behind the photos. So I'm gonna start with this. I'll cut a bunch of strips in different sizes and then we'll just go from there. All right, I've got all of my background pieces laid out. I mentioned that I wanted to keep things in long strips and I didn't do that with just these ones because what I realized is when I put them behind the photos, 
I didn't like that it was a different color at the top and bottom because you can't tell that that's just a multicolored paper. So that's the only strip that I cut strategically so I had the same color at the top and bottom and all of the other ones are long strips so I don't have as much to move around. But I wanted to add another mat around my photos so that they would pop a little more because we have a lot of color going on. I do still have my white space here that helps, but I need some more separation. So I thought I would try black since I do have a little black in my photos, but I don't want to take away from the soft colors in the background. So I don't want to have too big a mat. I think that that might be good about a quarter inch or maybe an eighth of an inch all the way around. Let me make sure that that's going to work over here because this is a darker photo. Yeah, I think that will work. So I think I'm going to add a black mat going all the way around and I'll have it just a little bit in the center too because I don't want the white butted up against the edge. I think I want to have black butted up against the edge. I use a three ring album or a D ring album rather than post bound. So my, my pages sit a little bit further apart in my album anyway. If you have a post bound album, your pages will sit a little closer together. And if you wanna have that continuous line of white going all the way across, you might just wanna have the white in the middle rather than have the black border go all the way around. But for me, that doesn't really make too big of a difference. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the black going all the way around. And then I can bring in some of those black uh, paperboard elements to scatter around just to make that black just pop a little bit. So I'll go ahead and cut some mats and we'll be back. I really like how my photos are popping more with that thin black mat. It's just an eighth of an inch all the way around. And now I wanna add a little bit of inking around all of my strips so that they pop a little bit more, especially the ones that have more of a white background. Now the two on the end, I'm going around three sides and then just up a little bit on the one side that's gonna be partially hidden. And then all of the other strips, I just have to do around the top and then down about an inch or two on each side so I don't have to go around the whole thing just what's going to be showing so I did a combination of flamingo and then I did a few of the strips in lagoon and in lemonade and I also cut all of the strips to 10 inches in length I got them all situated exactly where I wanted them and I didn't want to um, shift them around so I'm just carefully lifting up a little bit at a time so I can put some glue under there and make sure that they're staying in place. I butted the pages right up next to each other so I could line up all of the photos even though I do have that black mat in between and then I did leave those two strips on the outsides not adhered so I could lift them up when I do my stenciling. I'm testing out some ink colors for the stenciling. This is Ballerina which is a very light pink and I was thinking first I might want that and then I thought that I might want Lagoon because I do have more pink on the page and I'm going to add more pink flowers and I am liking that even though it's Lagoon next to La the Lagoon on the right. I did like the look of that. I chose the stencil that has the little different size polka dots and I'm taking a light hand which is the nice thing about these blending brushes and I'm just sort of making an organic look around where I think my cluster is going to be. I want to go a little bit higher up here and I'm not making it exactly in a square. I don't want it to be the exact shape of the stencil. I'm just kind of going around and moving it around so that the stencil is not like a super even also it kind of just helps with the whimsical look that I'm going for now I brought another Versa mat and I have it flipped over so that I have a cushy surface for stamping and some scrap paper and I'm going to peel off the two flowers from the stamp set and I'm going to just stamp them a whole bunch of times to make my own embellishments I love using my stamps to make my own embellishments and we're actually going to use the stamps in several different ways just for these little flower embellishments. So first I'm stamping them with archival black ink 
and that is the most vivid dark black ink to me. If you're going to be coloring them with um, alcohol markers, you want to use the intense black, but I'm not doing that here, so I'm using the archival black. And I stamped a whole bunch in both sizes, and then I'm going to use the background stamps to color them in. Now, there is a workshop guide for this bundle that's available for free on my website. I will link to that. And they, it creates three two-page layouts, just like all of Close to My Heart's other guides. Um, and this is one of the techniques that is in that guide, is using the background stamps to color these stamps. So I'm doing it a little bit differently, but I just thought that it was a really fun way to color the stamps and it gives it that kind of watercolory look and a whimsical, imperfect look like I have going on with the rest of the page, or at least what I'm trying to achieve. So I used the Flamingo first and I did some second and um, first generation stamping and then I'm going to use one of the other background stamps and I'm going to stamp onto these in the lagoon ink and I'm really liking the look of that but as I was doing it I realized I like the solid look that the pink flowers have but this gave me an idea to go back with that more solid stamp and fill in these flowers so that they have um, more a more solid look but I really liked the pattern and texture that that uh, that this background stamp gave it so I'm gonna go back and give a little more pattern and texture to the pink flowers too so now I'm going second generation to all of the blue flowers and then I'm gonna use this text background stamp and I'm just gonna use my fingers because it, it sticks to my fingers pretty well especially being new and it doesn't have to be perfect I'm gonna go back with the flamingo ink and then just go over all of these pink flowers and it adds that fun little texture to all of those stamps and I'm gonna get that one last little one with a second generation flamingo too. Now there are no dies for these, so I am going to fussy cut all of these out. It did take me a while, but it was totally worth it, and they're really easy to cut out. I like to cut them into individual flowers first, and then the micro tip scissors make it pretty easy to just turn the flower and keep going around with these sharp scissors. So I'm gonna just do one on camera so you can see that I am turning the flower, not my scissors. And so by keeping the scissors stationary and turning the flower, it just helps you to really glide around the image and I leave a little bit of a white border which helps hide any imperfections but just like that they're all cut out and arranged loosely on my page. So I, I laid them sort of generally where I wanted them just so I would know where I wanted to add any more stenciling. I decided to add a little bit more yellow. I wanted just a hint of yellow. So I'm taking that grid stencil and I'm doing another layer of stenciling over that area. And right here, I went a little bit heavier than I wanted to. Oh well, it ends up being fine, but I do wish that it wasn't quite as bright yellow. Now I've moved on to my title. It's gonna say Simply Perfect. I'm gonna use my T-square ruler here to help me line that up. I'm gonna hold up this little simply and just make sure I have enough spacing. I'm gonna move that title over just a tad and then I'm gonna put a second letter down and I think I'm gonna have it overlap both of those. I'll put down the R just to be sure I have enough stickers down and yes, I think that it's gonna look good right there overlapping the first two letters. That is perfect. Okay, so I'm gonna actually take these two off because I realized I forgot to put down that last strip of paper there. So I'm just gonna tuck that in and make sure that that is lined up. Now, one thing I noticed about these gold foil stickers is that they don't seem quite as sticky as the regular stickers for some reason. So I really burnished them in when I was ready for them to stick down. You can see me doing that there. Um, you may even wanna add a little bit of liquid glue behind them just to make sure they really stay in place. I'm gonna check this tomorrow and just make sure that they're not moving around. Now I'm putting all of my embellishments back in place. Now I do have two different leaves that I've die cut out. I used the sprigs and leaves set for those uh, white glitter paper and the vellum leaves 
those white ones that you see there and then the layered flowers set is what the blue flowers or the blue leaves are cut out of and I really like the soft look of the vellum and I also really like the white glitter paper I've kind of done that a lot recently is doing leaves in white glitter paper I just love the look of it and it works perfect with this paper and I like the leaves in the lagoon too because there's no green in this paper but the lagoon sort of serves as the green so I just really like how that looked so those are the only die cuts that I have used outside of the flowers that I stamped and used to create my own embellishments and then I also found some butterflies that were left over from my life's a hoot scrapbook kit there were a few pink butterflies so those worked perfectly this paper is so multicolored. I just couldn't help but bring in a rainbow. So this is the storybook scrapbooking stamp set that the rainbow is from, and I just colored it and cut it out. I colored it with my Spectrum Nora Tri-Blend markers. I will leave the colors that I used down below. I will note that I used an unexpected color for the dark pink to match the rosy. I used the lightest shade in the dark red blend for the darkest color of rosy, and then I blended it with the pale pink shades, and that uh, ended up making a really nice color to match rosy. And then I thought I would try to bring in this stamp of the month, the Little Stinkers. These little skunks are just so cute. And I thought maybe instead of the black paperboard pieces, I could add some pops of black with these skunks. Now, I also colored them with the Tri-Blend markers, those little flowers that are on a couple of the skunks. They were so cute. I went back and forth with this decision. I took them away and added them again and took them away and added them again because they really do add a different feel to the layout. While I think about it, I'm going to add some gold foil stickers around the page to tie in with the title. And I also thought I'd mention that the stamp of the month is available for only $5 with a $50 purchase. It's a really awesome program and I don't talk about it often here, but it's also available for free if you are a VIP. So if you're not a VIP, then check out that program because you get 15% back on all of your purchases. I will have more info down below. Then I saw this little sentiment on the skunk set that says stinking cute and I thought you know what that will help to tie this in even more and I decided to stamp it right onto one of my photos. I'm seasoning it really well on my hand to get any manufacturing gunk off and then I'm going to do a couple of test stamps just to make sure it's stamping well. If you're going to stamp onto your photos you need to use archival black ink but it is still really scary to do. I made sure that I lined it up, let it set just for a moment, pulled it up and it was not good. <laughs> so I don't know what I did. I somehow smeared it. My photo might have been a little bit too glossy, but you know what? Easy fix. I just stamped it onto a cardstock. I'm going to trim it out and give it a nice little dovetail edge and ink around the edges with pink and it's going to look like it was meant to be. See, there you go. Perfect. Covers it up perfectly and it looks like a sticker. I'll even add a little sticker with some gold right there to make it look like it belongs. So at this point, I'm removing those skunks and my daughter is standing next to me and I'm asking her with or without skunks. And she said, definitely with skunks. They are so cute. Plus, I'm stinky. <laughs> so, you know, she helped me make the decision easily. So I'm adding a finishing touch with the the clear shimmer brush to add a little bit of shine to all of the flowers around the skunks and those clouds. It's really hard to catch. I don't think you can really see it, but trust me, it is a beautiful shimmer on those items. I love the shimmer brush. And then there's also some dimension. I took all of the leaves and flowers and even the rainbow and the skunk, and I kind of rolled them on my thumb to give them some lift and dimension. And then I adhered them with a combination of regular tape runner, 
thin 3D foam tape and regular 3D foam tape. So there's lots of varying dimension and it looks so cute. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you like to see still shots, I have them on Instagram and Facebook. The links are down below as well as the links to the supplies I used. To check out the process video for my inspiration layout, you can visit this video on screen right now. Thanks for watching and have a great day.